and uh, welcome to another Powder Monkey tutorial on Reason. I haven't done any for quite a while, so I thought it was about time. Uh, so today, I'm going to have a look at the redrum. Now, I'm sure a lot of you will have used uh, the redrum in your uh, songwriting, because it's one of the key components uh, in Reason. Uh, but for those that haven't, let's just have a quick look at what uh, this instrument contains and how you go about inputting your sounds and writing your patterns and things like that. Okay, first of all, if we zoom in, we're going to have a look at uh, a channel in a bit more detail. So to load a sound, uh, you simply click on the folder button. I'll zoom back out. And I can go to my factory sound bank, for example. And the recent individual drum hits are stored under Redrum Drum Kits and then Exclusive Drums Sorted. They're, it's a bit hidden away, so they're right down the bottom. And I could then go and find, let's say, my bass drum. Nice big boomy bass. And then I can play it to hear it. Okay. Now, if I didn't like that drum sound, I can use the up and down arrows to scroll through all those drums in that folder. And you can do that whilst your song is playing. So that's really, really useful technique. Let's go back to the boomer. Uh, we also have, oops, sorry. We also have M and S, uh, which stands for mute and solo. So when we mute a sound, obviously it won't play in the pattern. And when we solo it, everything else, as you can see, is muted. We have the S1 and S2 uh, knobs, and I'm going to talk about those in the uh, second tutorial, but they're related to send effects and how you can get some effects into your drums. We also have a pan, so if we play it, we can then pan it to the left or pan it to the right. And then we've got some obvious ones, the level. So if we want to turn it down, Uh, the length of the sound and this switch here uh, is a decay and gate mode it's quite handy uh, we then have the pitch so again we can easily pitch this up and down uh, and the tone, so if we want to take some of the top end off, then we can bring the tone down. If we want to boost it and make it a bit brighter, then we can turn it up, and that can be controlled by velocity as well, which we'll look at a bit later on. Notice, not all the channels are the same. If we move along, you can see that uh, three and four and five have start positions. They don't deal with tone. So for example, you might have a clap, but you don't want the very start of the clap, then you could change the start position. Uh, we also have six and seven, which have pitch bending. And uh, we'll look at that in the second tutorial so you can get sounds to fall or rise up. Okay, so let's have a look how we uh, go about writing a drum pattern. Now I'm going to assume that you've either loaded your drums in individually or you've loaded in a patch. And if we load in a patch, uh, click on the folder button, we're taken to the patch window. We can browse our patches in the drum kits folder. So uh, let's go for some abstract hip hop. And what's really cool about reason four is that you can preview your sounds before you uh, load the kit so you can see the sounds are in there and if you've got a keyboard we can play them before we decide what kit we want so i might go well I'm not so keen on that and i go for six instead and that's a bit better so i'm going to go for that one so you don't have to commit every time and click ok cool so now we've got our drums in and I'm using my MIDI keyboard to trigger the sounds. This works on octave uh, minus one. 
okay so you will need to figure out where in your keyboard that is this is important because other octaves do other features so I've got my drum hits and now I just want to draw in a pattern so uh, as you can see I've got my drum kit selected and along here is my pattern uh, area and each of these blocks at the moment represents uh, one sixteenth of a bar, a sixteenth note. And to be honest with you, that's how most people will work within their patterns. So I'm going to click on the first note and then we'll say on the second note and then one towards the end. If we press run, we can hear that uh, drum kick in. Now if we change the resolution, and make it say 32, it's going to play it twice as fast. And so on and so forth. All the way down to one half, which basically means each of these blocks equals half a bar. Like I said, most people tend to stick on 1 16th. We've also got the step section here, uh, which we can change um, for example up to 32 um, and that works with this section here so you can then scroll between uh, the different blocks so you may have 32 blocks in a pattern and you would use this to move up and down between those blocks I personally I don't like that so much because I don't think it's very easy to see the rest of the pattern so I tend to stick with 16th okay I now want to get some hi-hats in so we look along here Okay, we click on the select, that's the important button. Always click on select to draw your notes in. And then I'm just gonna randomly draw some hi-hats in and then press run. Let's say I wanna get a snare in. Now let's get a couple more in. Now that's a bit loud, so I'm going to turn that one down. Okay, and we'll get some shakers in. And I'm just going to draw all the way along. Okay, now this is where we can get into some basic velocity settings. So over here, you can see on the dynamics, we've got hard, medium and soft. And at the moment, they're all on medium, this sort of dull yellow. If they're soft, it's a much lighter yellow. And if they're hard, it's a darker red. So velocity is so key in setting uh, much more interesting rhythmic patterns. So I'm going to just add in a couple of soft hits. And hopefully you can really hear the difference. So I'm going to solo this one. So we're on number seven. If you want to be a bit more expressive with the velocity, we can turn it right up on the level velocity so it's really kicking in. All the way down, it's not doing anything. That is being really responsive to our velocity. If we unsolo it, turn the length down. So there's our basic pattern. There's pattern one. And we then want to sort of start duplicating that pattern and move on to pattern two. So we can very simply right click and copy pattern. Always click on the green area because if you click outside, uh, if you click on the buttons, it won't give you that option. So right click, copy pattern. We can then go to pattern two and paste the pattern. And then we can start making some changes. So we might want to do, for example, a drum roll at the end. And that's the first steps in getting your patterns done. In the second video, we'll have a look at how we can get these patterns down into some order.